Hey guys, and welcome back to How to Make Elements from Household Materials. And today's element is actually going to be carbon. Again, in a previous video we actually made carbon, or rather extracted it, from um, zinc carbon batteries. However, in this video we're actually going to be synthesizing it from sugar and concentrated sulfuric acid. Now this carbon is not going to be in rods, not going to be really of any use, and is a lot more expensive to make slash obtain. So, um, yeah, it's just more of an interesting reaction that's pretty cool. So I basically have exactly... 10 grams of sugar here, just regular table sugar, and um, some concentrated 98% sulfuric acid, which is slightly yellow due to impurities that um, we actually distilled in a previous video. It's actually just slightly yellow because there was some extreme bumping and some of the uh, impurities in the uh, boiling flask actually came over and discolored it, but it's relatively pure. I mean, it's pure enough for almost every application. So you could go check that video out on how to distill it. Anyhow, so all we need to do, really, is add a bit of this highly concentrated sulfuric acid to our sugar, and then mix very quickly, so that hopefully all that sugar gets a coating. Now what's going to happen is the sulfuric acid should hopefully dehydrate our sugar, um, removing all the water, the oxygens and hydrogen, in the sugar molecule, forming carbon, and then hydrated sulfuric acid. And because we're using granular sugar, this is going to take a moment, but it is turning darker slowly. So we'll just let the reaction progress, and in a moment, it should run away. You can see it's getting more and more orange, and um, this is just the sulfuric acid dehydrating the sugar, because it really wants to get water. It's what they call really hygroscopic, which means it absorbs water readily, so uh, strong enough to actually dehydrate the sugar. So this will produce elemental carbon, which we can rinse of impurities, and we'll have some quite pure carbon powder. So uh, reaction looks like it's gonna get underway pretty soon. So uh, I guess I'll just probably cut the video here and start it as soon as it's ready. And there we go. A vigorous reaction is now taking place and generating plenty of elemental carbon, which is rising as this pillar, and it is now very, very hot as this is an extremely exothermic reaction. And you can see our lovely black carbon snake, which is just emerging from the beaker. So um, this should of course be done outside because toxic fumes are released, um, and there's most likely a bit of sulfuric acid vapor released, which you shouldn't really breathe in. So do, but definitely do this in a well-ventilated area. Um, Anyhow, so now that um, most of our sugar has been dehydrated to our nice black carbon, which has sprung up out here, we can now that take this inside, crush it, wash it, dry it, and then we'll be left with our nice carbon powder. So I'll meet you inside. So despite the incredibly neat looks of our black carbon snake here, it must now be destroyed, so we can wash it and obtain the elemental carbon from it. So we'll take all of our carbon from that beaker, which is contaminated with sulfuric acid, and um... I guess that's just basically the end result, sulfuric acid and probably some unreacted sugar. And uh, we'll transfer everything into this jar here. Preferably you should use a jar with a lid so that we can shake it up um, and this will just help wash our carbon a bit easier. At least that's what I'm hoping. Um, alternatively, you could use a beaker, however, I think it would be easier to uh, wash it if you could shake it. Anyhow, this is also quite crumbly as there is lots of gases inside from the hot water which was generated, which is steam. So uh, this will crush up into a fairly fine little powder. So crush it up, transfer it, and I'll meet you back. I just thought I'd quickly show you uh, the incredibly porous structure of the black carbon. I mean, um, I can easily crush it up, as you can see. Now you should of course wear gloves, because if you don't wear gloves, then uh, the sulfuric acid will burn your hands. So just be careful of that. I'll meet you back as soon as I crushed it all and transferred it. Okay, so um, I just took the carbon stuff, crumbled it up, washed it, washed it, washed it, and washed it some more. And after several, several water washings, I simply dried it. Um, and in between water washings, I made sure to crumble it up to get rid of as much of the residual acid as possible. Also, one of the products is uh, sulfur dioxide, um, and that leaves thousands of little air bubbles of sulfur dioxide in there. We want to break those up too, just to release all the sulfur dioxide. So, we are now left with a nice, fine black carbon powder. There's 2 grams here, which is a dismal yield, considering we started with 10 grams of sugar. Although, I don't see where we lost a whole lot, which most likely, although I did, um, there was some still stuck in the filter paper, but probably just a gram or so. This means that most likely the rest of it was actually um, just not reacted in the first place. Uh, we just never 
um, had the reaction go to completion, so there was probably still some sugar left over, um, and it didn't fully react. That's my guess. I'm not sure what else. Um, anyhow, so yeah, that's basically how to make carbon um, from sugar and sulfuric acid in a very interesting reaction. So, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Wait, bye.